Hello! I bet you're wondering whether the beautiful new models that Mantic produced for their War in the Holds two-player starter set are quite as beautiful as Mantic has made out. You're about to find out! Okay, so this is my hobby desk, uh, where I do my hobby. Uh, it's just got some stuff. There's a tree herder that I'm kind of halfway through painting, and there's some uh, Rackin Nightmares that I'm uh, also halfway through painting. I've done a little conversion on their guns, as you can see. Just waiting for uh, some paint to arrive, which I've ordered for them. But all of that is out of the way, because today this arrived from Mantic Games, which is very exciting. And it's not an unboxing, I've clearly already opened it. However, inside this lovely, lovely box is sprues. Sprues, boys and girls, of the new two-player starter set for Kings of War. So I've got a sprue of goblins, and I've got, actually I've got two sprues of goblins, and two sprues of Rackin, which is the ones that I'm really interested in. If you are interested in talking about goblins, it's fair to say that Rob Berman has done more videos about goblins than it's healthy for a human to do. However, I did just want to show you this. So, these will be very familiar to anyone that has seen uh, Rob's videos on Mantic. Excuse my slightly shaky hands right now, so they're beautifully detailed. I happen to have uh, the end of a sprue of old spitters that I'd used for um, making slaves. I just wanted to show you the comparison, just to show you how far they've come. These are the old goblin heads, right? These are the new goblin heads. They are in a wildly, wildly different class. Old goblin arms, just horrific to put together. All the same, terrible. New goblin arms, just... Lovely. Really, really, really nice. So anyway, enough about goblins. No one cares about them. Everyone cares about Ratkin. Am I right? Of course I'm right. So we're going to crack this open and take a look at them. I failed to open a plastic packet, which is kind of the basic of an opening thing video. I'm not very good at this, but I have a static camera, so that's good. Whoa, it's not every tree holder. Right, so these sprues have already been shown off in a Mantic video, so they had some really nice photography and you probably want to look at that. So let's just do a quick uh, run over of what's on the sprues. There's two sprues, as we can see. This is uh, Ratkin Warriors sprue one, Ratkin Warriors sprue two. Now there is going to be upgrade kits to make these into shock troops, but I just wanted to kind of go over them uh, myself a little bit, so let's have a quick look. Now Mantic have said these are intended to make warriors and spear warriors. Okay, you can make wretches out of them if you feel like it, but the detail on these is lush, really nice. And there are so many heads. You know, I've been making Mantic Ratkin for well over a year, and I've been making them with a vermin. And Vermin, I mean, you've got the little gas mask. If you want to use the non-gas mask, you've basically got two heads. So to have this many heads of this much detail, it's given me a little, little Ratkin chubby. I don't mind. I'm telling you. So there's some arms. This is one thing, actually, I don't like about the sprue. So I can, I can say negative things. <laughs> Sorry, Rob. But I'm not a fan of the fact that the arms are attached to shields. I would prefer to be able to choose that. And I get the detail, you can see the detail, but I find arms attached to a shield, once you've glued them together, can be a bit of a pain to paint the inside. I prefer to have the shields and put them on myself. Maybe the shock troops, you have the option to have uh, non-shielded arms, double weapons maybe, who knows? So here's some spears for the spear warriors. And then on this sprue is more swords, kind of makeshift. Don't forget, they hit on fives. So really, these shouldn't be looking this deadly. They are terrible. They are defense four, hence I guess the shields. And this over here, oh, this is the place. So these are the bodies, let's do the bodies first. So these are their backs. So you can see some of that lovely detail. Kind of little ripped cloaks. I quite like that detail, it's nice. Think about it. It's not too many straps, well done. A little bit of, little bit of skulls going on there. I'm quite sure what their obsession with skulls is. 
And these little balls, I don't know what these balls are. Uh, answers, on a, answers on a postcard. Turn it over. This is the plague pot. So the plague pot's really nice. He's these kind of screaming faces either side, and that's the base. What's that little lumpy bit? Oh, I think that's another arm, is it? Mm, yeah, that's the arm to go with the shield. That arm goes with that shield. I guess if you wanted a spiked buckler. That's possibly to go with the whip guy. Could be a slave driver or whatever you fancy. A little chain motif going on there. Once a slave, always a slave, maybe? I don't know! Might be interesting to try and paint that on top. Oh, that's a skull kind of armour on that guy. I see. A little bit of a callback to the Veermin. The same kind of similar style in some ways. Right. So there's my two sprues. Okay, so, got my clippers, got my little craft knife, uh, got my super glue. I'm gonna have a go at putting them together. Uh, let's see how we go. So a little comment about mold lines. I'll go into detail in a minute, but the mold lines are largely concealed down the sides of the body. So you can see here where the arms are going to go on. Uh, that's going to be covered up largely. There is a little bit on that, that kind of gourd that he's got on the side of him that will need to be trimmed off. And down the side of his leg, it kind of follows the line of the body down here. So that's something that, they're not too bad. I'd say not too bad. I've seen much, much, much worse. Uh, so that's nice to see. So just going to do some clean up on these. Instantly, if you're wondering whether I put a brand new blade into my knife and then instantly sliced into my finger because it's way sharper than I'm used to, yes I did. Okay, so the legs are keyed, so can you see? There's a little slot just here, which matches up to a certain type of leg on the sprue. So the right and left are just keyed separately, I think. Yeah, so you can just uh, use whichever leg you like. What's really nice to see is that there's evidently been a lot of thought put into where mold lines are. So even on these blades, you know, they're down uh, the flat part of the blade, which is easy to remove, and they're really inconspicuous on the arms. I think arms, individual arms, are really hard uh, because you tend to have the sprue attached you know, right at the top here, um, which tends to leave a kind of a nasty piece if you're not very careful about moving it. But it's very delicately done, uh, and I'm quite impressed by it. Quick look at these shields, since I'm about to choose which ones I want. I only do five. I might as well do one of each. This is what I've got. A really nice patchworky type shield, so you could put as little or as much detail into those when you uh, paint them up. Uh, yeah, not bad. Same thing with the arms, really, as the on the other side. You know, they've done them as carefully as possible. You just get mold lines when you have hard plastic. You can see here, mold lines down the edge of the. But they're you know they're pretty minimal. That shield is probably the worst that I've seen in the whole sprue, and it's very very minimal. So, yeah, not bad. I wonder how it's going to fare on the old heads, because I think mould lines on the front of the face are one of the hardest to remove. So there is a little bit of flashing, which is understandable. Look on this head, can you see? But there's a hold in on that one. It's really, really good. Much better than the old, the old style. See, it'll be down the front of that, but they tend to have a big tooth at the front for rats. So not that hard to scrape off. Is that a head? That's really goblin style. Not sure I like that one, but there's definitely enough variety for you to find one that you do like. That's going to be made into so many assassins. Why are they called down? Scurrious. Now my assertion about the legs earlier, I don't think it was right because I think some legs fit with somebody, so you have to find the right leg for the right body. They've got different shapes in them. So that's why I am now trying to glue this leg that I tried to glue to the wrong rat. To the right, rat. Okay, yeah, and see, this one fits a lot better onto this one. 
Well, you can't see because my fingers are all over it, but trust me, it really does. There you go. Here we are, this is just on my uh, priming stick thing. So it gives you an idea of what they look like now that they're made. They are very, very cool. I am, you know, you have to appreciate where I've come from in making 4,000 points of rats out of uh, vermin. Um, I have had to convert every single one to make them you know, feasible. But to be faced now with models I can literally just put together and then paint, and they are Mantic Ratkin, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I'm pretty, pretty happy rat fan right now. So I'm going to paint uh, one of these guys up. I'm going to find them all, and I will paint them all. But just for the purposes of getting this video out nice and quickly, I'm going to paint one of these guys. Do one, two, three, four, or five. I think we're probably going to paint number two. Uh, this fella, because I like his pose. And uh, I'll let you know how the paint goes on. All right, we are done. So I, I'm very nervous about showing you this because no one really likes their paint stuff to be like really close up if they're not like a super, super great painter. And I am not a super, super great painter. So what I've done, I've done kind of what I consider like a battlefield paint job on this guy. Um, because they're going to be in units, right? You're going to want uh, you know, 30 of these guys or 20 of these guys or whatever in a unit. So I've done a kind of battlefield paint job on this. Um, I spent maybe an hour and a half painting him up um, total over the over the weekend in between, you know, living my life. And as you can see, one of the things I was worried about was with models like this that have got loads and loads of fine detail, would the undercoat obscure the detail? And it has a little bit. I mean, I use a rattle cam undercoat on it. So there is some detail, you can see the chain, perhaps not as detailed with all the layers of paint as you might think, but it's it's still there. I think it's retained a level of detail that's pretty good. Um, yeah, I've done, yeah, so there you go. That's my that's my average paint job, so that's I'm I'm not a brilliant painter, but, uh, but I think it's it's come up pretty well. It certainly takes paint pretty well. Uh, there's enough detail for it to be interesting, but not so much detail you're painting straps forever and ever and ever. Kind of these strappy blocks like this, this block here whoa, is kind of, you know, it, it's simple enough to do. It's not like super, super fine straps. There's none of those super, super fine straps, really, which is good. There's a belt underneath there, a little chain. If you wanted to do that, you can see in his belt. Um, but yeah, I think it's turned out pretty nicely. So that's what a, a battlefield paint job looks like from an average painter. And um, you can imagine that the uh, Angel Hualdez and the, the, the uh, Daniel Reeds of this world, not the Daniel Reed, would ever stoop to having a uh, rack in, but you never know. Uh, we do a very lovely job. I've done this job. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. So overall, thumbs up.